popularity of Wi-Fi came from no longer having to worry about cumbersome networking cables. With Wi-Fi, connectivity is everywhere in your home or office, or at least you hope it's everywhere. In this, the third video of our Air Expert series, we'll discuss how Wi-Fi is transmitted over the air by way of radio frequencies, or RF for short. Whether you realize it or not, electromagnetic waves are everywhere. Whether you're reading a book, using Wi-Fi on your tablet, listening to the radio, getting an x-ray in your doctor's office, or heating up your dinner in a microwave oven, you're using electromagnetic waves. These waves are characterized by their wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between peaks within the wave. Wavelengths within the electromagnetic spectrum range from the very short, for example, gamma rays are in the range of picometers, that's less than the diameter of an atom, to very long wavelengths. An AM radio wavelength is kilometers in width. The radio frequency spectrum is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that includes wavelengths ranging from about a centimeter to kilometers in width. Wi-Fi signals fall into the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency bands within the RF spectrum. RF signals are characterized by their frequency. The frequency is the number of cycles the electromagnetic wave makes per second, which is measured in hertz. A signal of 1 hertz has 1 cycle per second, and a signal of 1 gigahertz has 1 billion cycles per second. Since electromagnetic waves travel at very near the speed of light, you can determine the wavelength of a signal by knowing its frequency, and vice versa using a formula. Frequency is c, or the speed of light, divided by lambda, which is the wavelength. The speed of light is roughly 300 million meters per second. So for a Wi-Fi signal in the 2.4 gigahertz band, the wavelength is in the range of 12 centimeters. And in the 5 gigahertz frequency band, the wavelength is about 5 centimeters. The rule of thumb is, the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Wavelength is an important factor for Wi-Fi because it impacts how the RF wave will interact with obstacles in the environment. Longer wavelengths, which are lower frequencies, travel longer distance than shorter wavelengths, which are higher frequencies. This is why, for example, AM radio broadcasts can be received so far from the transmitter tower. Apart from its frequency, an RF signal is also characterized by its amplitude and phase. The amplitude is the strength of the signal, or the height of its peak. The higher the signal amplitude, the stronger the signal is. As Wi-Fi signals travel through the air in your home or office, they can encounter any number of obstacles that will degrade signal quality. This is partly why you don't get the same signal quality in each room of your home or office, and you can even find variations in signal quality within the same room. Wi-Fi signals will be subjected to reflection, refraction, and diffraction, which is a fancy word for scattering, depending on the surfaces and materials in your environment. For example, a flat, shiny surface will reflect the signal, a window will refract the wave, and an uneven metallic surface like a wire mesh will scatter it. These other copies of the signal may affect the receiver's ability to properly decode the Wi-Fi signal and could require retransmission. A big contributor to the signal's degradation is the attenuation it experiences while traveling through obstacles. Walls, for example, decrease the signal's strength and make it harder for the receiver to decode, decreasing your Wi-Fi operating range. The amount of attenuation depends on the obstacle's shape and what it's made of. This table shows how much signal attenuation you can expect from common building materials. Signal loss is measured in decibels, or dB for short. The dB scale is logarithmic. This means that a 3 dB loss corresponds to cutting the transmit power in half, while a 10 dB loss corresponds to dividing the transmit power by 10, and a 30 dB loss means cutting the transmit power by 1,000. Also note that the 2.4 GHz frequency signals are not attenuated the same way as the 5 GHz signals. In most cases, there's a limit to how much control you have over your environment. While you can move tables and chairs, it's much harder to get rid of ceilings or move windows or walls. But other parameters are more controllable, and knowing some basic rules about the signal's behavior will help you make better decisions in the placement of Wi-Fi equipment. As you now understand from this video, it's not a good idea to place Wi-Fi access points behind a metallic wire mesh, 
large metallic objects, or concrete or brick walls, as these obstacles can significantly decrease the signal's quality. OK, time for a little quiz. Assuming there are no obstacles, and that the transmitter power is the same, which signal travels the furthest from your Wi-Fi access point? A signal in the 2.4 GHz band, or in the 5 GHz band? The 2.4 GHz signal will travel further than a 5 GHz signal. This is because signals with longer wavelengths travel farther. Can a Wi-Fi signal be attenuated just by traveling a long distance without any obstacles? Yes. This is called free space path loss. Even with direct line of sight to your access point, you'll eventually get a signal level too low to be useful because of error attenuation. The formula for calculating that loss is a little beyond the scope of this video, but you should know that the 2.4 GHz signal will lose roughly 80 dB in power after 100 meters, while the 5 GHz signal will lose roughly 86 dB.